Hey, thanks for joining me today, and I'd like to show you how to get started using the Infragistics drag and drop framework. So what we'll build is a page that has some images with uh, the drag and drop behavior applied to them. And down here we have the target area, so I can take each one of these images, drag them in, and you can see that uh, they stack next to each other nicely. A combination of JavaScript, some CSS classes, and the Infragistics drag and drop framework we can create something like this. So you notice that the style on this element's been updated, so it doesn't appear like you can drag it around anymore, which is it's the case. Um, so we're keeping it pretty basic, and uh, let me go ahead and show you uh, how to do this. So here we are in Visual Studio 2008, and I just created a standard web form page. Now they give us this div, and I'd like to go ahead and just remove that. And we'll start off by adding a script manager to the page. I'm going to be pasting some code and, and writing some code. Um, this is best just being pasted in. Now what we're doing is putting in some script references and you can see that we have the Infragistics drag and drop framework and this IG objects file which has utilities and objects and, and some, some basic things that we need in order to, to make the magic happen. So also just know that there's a some of this is kind of cryptic and I'll be writing an article that accompanies this, this video. So if you're not able to get everything from the video um, then you can take a look at the, the article in order to find out what should be referenced in these script references. But I'll scroll here through here kind of slowly so you get an idea. You can pause the video if, if you decide you want to type this in manually, especially that public key token. Okay, so that's the scripts. Now the next thing that I want to do is put some, some HTML, some content on the page. And basically what we're doing is creating a div structure and what it will do is inside of the div have an image. So we have a container here, so this div items. This is important here because in JavaScript we'll look at this container and loop through each one of the items in order to add the drag and drop behavior to it. So the item is styled in such a way so that the images will line up next to each other and the movable class will tell uh, the browser to render the crosshairs out to the cursor and that way you have an idea that it's, it's movable. This is something that will be removed as, after it's been dropped. So then we have an image, we're just using the resolve URL here in order to find out what our, our path is and then we're going to each one of the images. Uh, some, some good looking kids at the drums. And so what the script will do is mark this, this container down here, the destination, as being a drop target. And so we'll be able to drag items from up in this items container down into the destination container. And so that's uh, it's pretty basic. All right, so let's get started writing some script then. So we'll open up a JavaScript block. And the first thing that we need to do is create a function that will run when the application is loaded. So we'll do sys application add load. And we'll just call our function app loaded. So from there, we'll just create the function. So once the application is loaded, the first thing that we want to do is create a new instance of the drag and drop behavior class. So in order to do that, we'll declare a new variable. We'll call it dd for drag and drop, and we'll create a new ig drag and drop behavior class. And also what we'll need is a, a reference to our items container. So let's create items now what we'll do from here is loop through each one of the items in the item container and add those divs as a source element for the dragging so we'll open our for loop so let's look at the child nodes of this uh, items container Now if the one we're looking at has the get attribute be, uh, method, then we'll go ahead and attach it as a source item. So the framework will use that method later on, so we want to make sure it's available to us before we do anything. And then from here we can uh, talk to the drag and drop behavior and say add source element. and point 
to our existing child node. Now the next thing we have to do is decide where we're able to drop the items that we're dragging. So we'll use the behavior object once again and we'll say add target element. And here we'll do a get destination and we want to include the children we'll say yes and finally we need a function to run once the element has been dropped because we'll manipulate the the dom a little bit and clean things up so again looking at the behavior we'll say get events add drop handler and we'll just call this function drop. So now let's go ahead and create the drop function. Now what needs to happen here is once it's been dropped we need to remove it from its original location and add it into the new location. So we need to add it down into that destination container and remove it from the items container. So the first thing we need to do is declare an items variable, very much like what we did up at the top. And let's grab the destination as well. Now this div variable will be a new element that we create in order to add it down into the destination container. So we'll say document create element and this is a div. And finally the source we need to grab out of the event args. So we're going to be calling this get manager and then get source dot element. So from here what we can do is take a look at the items container and we can say remove child and basically we just need to do get the element by ID so we'll take a look at our source and take its ID and pass that down. So now we've removed it from the items container. Now with the div, the inner HTML will equal what came in from the source. So now it has the same inside markup as, as the source did. And then we're going to do a few more things. Now you might wonder, there, there's a JavaScript property, outer HTML, and if that worked on all the browsers, that would be great, but Internet Explorer I think even the newer versions of Firefox, it doesn't work correctly. I'm, I, I don't know why, but it doesn't. So what we're going to do is instead of setting the outer HTML by simply looking at the properties, we need to build up some of the attributes that we knew we had in the beginning. So with the div, we will do a set attribute, and we'll set the ID equal to what the source's ID was. Now we run into an issue here of how the browsers do things. Internet Explorer, when you're setting the CSS class, you have to use the class name key in order to set the class attribute. So when we set the class, we're going to do it twice, once for Internet Explorer and once for basically everybody else. So if we say div set attribute, we'll say class, and then what we're doing is, remember from the markup here, we have item and movable. We want to remove the movable, so the easiest way here is just to stick item on there, and now it'll it'll show up the way it needs to go. So that's for basically any other browser except Internet Explorer. So let's do the same thing here, and we'll say class name and item. So now basically within the DOM, this this element has both of those attributes, and that's fine. So it'll work as it needs to um, on any browser. So finally what we'll do is get another instance of the web drop framework 
or the behavior I should say and we will remove a source and each one of these divs here will now be removed from being able to drag them around because we haven't set up functionality to, to do anything else with it once it's down in the destination and finally with the, the destination object here we will append the child of our new div and so basically this code here gets run each time you drag and or excuse me each time you drop an item into the destination okay so that's the JavaScript now there's a little bit of styling that we need to do so that everything shows up correctly and I'll just paste this in and we can kind of go through it the items container just has a little bit of padding and we're gonna give it a height and then have a border around it so you can see where it is the destination has a gray background it's overflow auto you don't even really need that's kind of left over from some other stuff I was doing but it basically gives it some shape and color each one of the items because they're divs they will display as block level items so I've set them inline and gave them a margin so there's some space between them and then for the movable class the cursor will be set to move and so that should give it the styling that we need now I put the script in the wrong place instead of putting it in the header it really needs to go after the scripts have been loaded or else we'll get an error so let's move that down and so now we should be able to run it and hopefully get what we're looking for so here's the the images on this page you'll notice that the CSS class when I hover over it it gives it the move cursor and so I should be able to drop drag it down to the destination it removes it from the DOM from the initial container above adds it to the DOM to the destination below and generally works just exactly the way we would like. So I hope this gets you up and running with the drag and drop framework. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.